14-01 special events, the fee schedule and free application meetings and the zoning map. Mr. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, this has been uh, our most recent efforts to uh, improve the regulations that we have in the ULDC. Overall, um, in 2006, we set up a process to approve what we call special events, the smallest of which range from almost like a car show in a parking lot to the largest of which are the uh, outdoor concerts. With that, um, our direction has been to improve the regulations, keep having special events, uh, but make sure that they are safe and orderly. And so that's what we've tried to do here. With that, if you have a sliding scale on one side that is more of the applicant, promoter, property owner, and on the other side of the scale is more of Lowndes County and the neighbors, this is these amendments are probably aimed more at improving the regulations towards the county side and towards the existing neighbor side rather than the promoter or the property owner. We've taken these through staff, uh, the Planning Commission, and then most recently the update I gave you this morning was an email I got from uh, the promoter of Luke Bryan's concert, which is the largest event that we see. I spoke with him Friday afternoon, and I think that we have the amendments in a form that, depending your direction, are probably uh, within about five points of being completely recommended by, by everyone, the Planning Commission and staff involved. Um, the five points that I would lift up, the Planning Commission regarding the notice, and this is one of their conditions in your staff report. Um, staff recommended the notice trigger to be about 2,500 people. When you have a festival over a few days or a season, or you have a um, event that is over expected participation of 2,500 people, we think you should then be notifying the neighbors in the area about the event. Uh, the Planning Commission debated whether to back that down and ultimately went from about 1,500 to 500 people. And so their recommendation is to not trigger at 2,500, but at 500 people, trigger that notice requirement for the adjacent property owners or adjacent neighbors. Um, so that's their condition number one. Condition two was they wanted to make sure that if someone comes in says we're going to do an event for 300 people but they do really well and go over that 500 people that they want to make sure that there's still some notice sent out ahead of that ahead of that event so that's the planning commission's concerns those um, depending on the board's direction those two are not updated in the draft that you have in front of you so de depending on what feedback we get this morning and tomorrow we'll we'll make those updates the Dennis Freeman conversation which again is Luke Bryan's promoter Friday afternoon, overall, the conversation went well. He only really brought up two and three, well, really three points uh, for us to consider. The first one was we have a new requirement in place that says if you're going to bring an event into town that has over 10,000 people, before we spend as staff and you spend as a promoter money and time and resources and really the months that it takes to prepare for these events, we put in just a pre-approval from the county manager. So that way, if there's something going on that no one is spinning their wheels or spending money, if this event really just doesn't have what it takes to happen. He just asked if we're going to put that in there, that maybe there'd be some time constraints, like you have to submit the permit, you know, 90 days in advance, and we have to, you know, we'll have 30 days to hear back from us. We don't have that. And so that was a reasonable request. And what I'd like to do is go to the TRC tomorrow and get some dates that we feel like we can work with, because that's a, that's a legitimate point he brought up. Um, Number two, he said the fees that we're going to propose. He said the 10% based fee schedule that we have, he says seemed a little high in comparison to some of the municipalities he works with. I think it's just something to note from his perspective because he does work uh, all over for these type of special events. And then the third point, um, by the way we've broken down our fees, it's based on participation. You know, 2,500, 5,000, 10,000 plus people. He thinks that um, what we're setting ourselves up for is for someone to come in and say, I'm only going to have, you know, 2,200 people, and then they are going to under-report what they think they're going to get. Um, so he thinks we just need to know that going in, that the, ba the way we've regulated ourselves, he thinks people are going to try to under-report how many people they're letting come in. Um, so overall, pending board direction, um, I do feel like the deadlines are something we really should consider, and I'd like to get some feedback. Um, from the staff on that to give you all some deadlines. Um, otherwise, I think everything else is really um, at your discretion whether you want to take action or leave things as they are. But they've been advertised. We've sent out additional notice with email to try to solicit some responses, and we've communicated with 
some of our key stakeholders, especially the sheriff's office, to try to make sure that we have their feedback. So more of a longer introduction this morning, but I wanted to make sure that you're current and caught up, and I think that's where things stand. Okay. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions for Mr. Davenport? I do, Mr. Davenport. A couple um, regarding Mr. Freeman's concerns. The mm -hmm. second concern about the um, percentage, um, he felt like that was a little high. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you guys look around South Georgia, look around areas similar to ours and, and get a get an idea of, of what they were charging? I mean, it, I don't think it's really fair to for him to say this is out of line with other municipalities. I mean, the resources that we have to muster to, to handle that are pretty significant. So I just did you do any sort of comparative study? No, not on the fees. The fees that we felt like we put forward were based on our time. You know, right. we, we really, and I'll be honest, um, they're probably a little low if you took in our t just just our time in getting sure. the application ready for approval. Um, we can do some additional homework just to see if there's some out there in our area, but so far those fees were strictly uh, based on what we felt like we put into the project from just a time a time constraint. Right. And uh, regarding his his third concern about underreporting, I, I would imagine that would be a problem. In any instance, I would think it, so. Is um, you plan on addressing that with the TRC or with your with the staff? We currently don't have a threshold that talks about participation. You know, and what we notice from studying other communities is that they they tend to have kind of minor or major events and kind of thresholds. That obviously, the more people you have, the more stringent the requirements are because you need more of a response to be prepared for that. So. I would say, just from me, I, I would say it's something to note, but if they end up going over those fees, just like what the Planning Commission said, then we'll just charge them extra. I mean, you know, I feel like it's something for us to be aware of, but if we're truly going to try to make these um, relative to what kind of participation they have, I don't know another way they do it besides cutting off numbers of people and saying you just, you know, under this number is this much and over this number is that much. So I, I think it's something to note, but... If it's just based on my opinion, I don't think we change anything in respect to that concern other than it's something for us to be aware of that they're, they, they might under-report initially, and it's something for us to just keep track of. I appreciate your work. It's a, it's a balancing act to try to make sure that we are welcoming to, mm -hmm. to special events while at the same time we, we certainly can't afford to, <laughs> to pay for the resources it takes to – for some of these large events, so thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? <coughs> yes, Mr. Chairman, I just want to thank Jason and the staff for working on this. You know, this has been a big concern of mine since last year. Uh, uh, Commissioner Raines touched on much of what I wanted to ask about, uh, but I still have like one or two questions pertaining to the third one. I, based on what I heard from last year, I think he, he might have benefited the most uh, based on having the cap because what he had about 22,000 people, right? Yeah, we cut them off last year at um, 17,000 tickets um, for the Luke Bryan concert last year. And it was still over that amount yes, to show up. I, I believe so, it was probably over that um, amount. Um, regarding the um, condition number one, what type of time frame or notice uh, did, do you recommend for that condition? What we've done in the past is we've selected a series of addresses in the area just had the promoter send out a letter to the residents. Um, we don't have a current time frame built in for, for the notice. That gives us the flexibility to say as early or as far out as we want. I think a probably minimum time frame is you probably want at least a week before the event um, with some kind of notice sent out where that's, where that's triggered. Um, and, is, and if you're so that, that is the time frame I'd probably give you for the notice. We don't have it, something like zoning, where it requires you to have 30 days or 15 days. We haven't gotten that specific. And we did that on purpose to give ourselves the flexibility. I, I noticed uh, Condition 2 had one. That's why I didn't see one for Condition 1. That's why I asked. Oh, yes. That, that's just from their feedback is they, they, they thought a week was appropriate from the Planning Commission, sir. Right. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, we'll move.